Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here back there daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP. So let's just dive in and let's talk about a few things. So first off, I want to say right now, if you guys are you know, into the whole FedNow service sort of idea, um, if you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you are probably all aware of this. We have been discussing this for a very long time and today we did see a major announcement we're going to be discussing this we're going to be talking about it definitely stay tuned to the end of this video as there's a ton of you know information and content that i do want to also show you um but today we're going to be starting with this tweet from gold telegraph um, i've always said that these central bank digital currencies are going to be ushered in and we do see here the steps to them step one tell us inflation is uh transitory step two watch inflation rage step three tell us inflation was not transitory step four tell us we will have a soft landing step five watch the you know everything bubble burst and step six introduce a central bank digital currency now listen there's a lot of concern around these i've always said it right a retail cbc is probably going to be in you know inescapable you're not going to be able to escape it they're probably going to usher it in this is a big concern um i fully welcome wholesale cbcs i do not like the idea of a retail cbc we've talked about this on many occasions but i don't believe that we are going to escape it i think that they are going to push in a major major pushed agenda that is probably going to be pretty dark they, they will control your bank account they will control what you spend what you do you know, a lot of people have a lot of questions about this. I am not the one to be able to answer those. We don't know exactly what is going to happen. Um, I don't know everything. Listen, I'm going to be the first one to say, like, <laughs> I don't know what the next major step here is after they introduce a full-on central bank digital currency around the world. We are getting to that point. I would say by 2030, nearly every single area around the world will be running on a digital currency. Now, what is going to happen once we do see this? Are we going to see bank, you know, con like bank accounts being controlled? Are we going to see them being frozen? We have no idea. We can only speculate. But I'm not going to be here to fear monger or anything like that around these central bank digital currencies. I've always said that I think that the retail CBC is a very bad idea, and I don't think that we should be supporting it. Um, a wholesale CBC is fully welcome. That's where the central bank digital currency or the central banks are utilizing their central bank digital currencies as a tool. But I, like I said, we are going to be seeing a major reset and we do see our bank of finland governor stresses digital euros importance in transforming monetary landscape in other words a reset yes we will see the entire monetary landscape of the world in a full reset we will go and basically get rid of fiat uh, for retail use and usher into a digital age they are going to be tracking and tracing every single payment this is the biggest problem this is why i've said we need to push back against a digital currency. We're only like, I've said it time and time again, uh, a digital currency for the retail individual where it replaces fiat, you no longer have to use fiat or can use fiat. That's probably one of my biggest concerns about a CBDC. Is it going to be like that? Is it going to be, you know, confirmed to where the fact that like, you know, retail individuals have to utilize a CBDC, they can't use any other payments means. You know, will our bank accounts be fully controlled? We have no idea. But, you know, as we have seen from the World Economic Forum, things are looking pretty weird, especially around the whole idea of like, you know, you will own nothing and be happy. Like, there is a lot of concern around this market. Now, I'm not going to try to make this into a bullish statement for XRP, but XRP, or I shouldn't say XRP, but Ripple has been focused on CBDCs, more specifically utilizing XRP as a bridge currency. You know, I'm going to say it right now. Most of my money, right? If like we're talking about bank accounts, etc., like I don't even hold that much fiat. A lot of my money is tied up into stable coins and tied up into crypto. Um, I, I I don't really like to hold money in my bank account just because we have been seeing a lot of bank accounts being utilized as a payments means for you know major banks. They've been taking control of you know the retail bank accounts overseas in some of those major countries. I haven't really been holding a lot of money in my bank account because I do believe that crypto is the future and I will be holding a lot of digital assets. Now, obviously, yes, I do still hold stable coins and I utilize them as a payment means, uh, but we have been watching a few things around this market unfold and CBDCs look like they are going to be ushered in. I would say like the entire global landscape of the monetary policy by 2030 should be running on a CBDC. Again, we don't know the basis behind this. But it de definitely does look like a, a dark agenda being pushed around them. 
Uh, all we know is that XRP could very well be the global bridge currency, and it looks like it could very well be that. And we do see down here, like, you know, this is from Brad Garlinghouse. We're focused on tackling central bank digital currencies as the future of fiat. Key to this will be our ongoing work with the central banks and developing protocols that support the direct exchange of CBDCs on the XRP ledger, using XRP as a bridge currency. Now, I'm not going to be one to sit here because I'm not biased. Listen, I hold a very large amount of XRP. It is a staple in my portfolio, but I'm not going to sit here and say, hey, I think that XRP is going to be the, you know, one size fits all for everything. No, that is not the case. But I do believe that Ripple will play a pivotal role within CBDC issuance, as well as XRP being utilized for the bridge currency. This is why I do believe that XRP's value is so much higher than double digits. Um, we've talked about this on many occasions. Um, I don't think that it's going to be a short time frame for XRP to hit specific targets. I don't like to give time frames either. You know, I don't write anything off with XRP. I think that the potential of XRP is unlimited. I think that it has a ton of application use case value to it, specifically around the monetary policy, uh, around the mo uh, monetary landscape. And this is what we have been focused on, is CBDCs. What we do see over here as well. Now, this is what I was just talking about in the beginning of this video. The Federal Reserve is announcing a, a FedNow payment system which we've been addressing for a while. This is the real-time network. This is going to have real-time settlement within it. We do see breaking news. Federal Reserve plans 2023 launch a FedNow payment system, which will compete with another real-time network built and launched by big banks in 2017. Here it comes. And we do see the quote down here as well. The Fed has said its system uh, to be called FedNow would, or sorry, would provide a second option in the market that would lower costs, improve efficiency, and also reduce the vulnerability of the financial system. Now, how do you reduce, you know, the the vulnerability of the financial system? Well, it, it's a few ways. Yesterday we actually talked about this even with SWIFT. Uh, there was a video of Brad Garlinghouse basically firing shots at the at the SWIFT uh, CEO, saying like, listen. You know, banks around the world, specifically even central banks, have said utilizing the, you know, RippleNet protocol with XRP undermines the SWIFT system and it unlocks efficiencies and even lowers the um, vulnerability of the payment network. Now, I'm not saying that the Federal Reserve will utilize XRP here, but we have been watching this closely. And we even do see like the full on article over here from the Wall Street Journal, Fed plans 2023 launch of long anticipated faster payment system. Fed now would compete with the private sector system that some smaller lenders have been reluctant to use. And this is going to be one of the biggest things yet. And it is 2023. We've been talking about this, but this has been in the works for a very long time. In fact, a lot of ex a lot of people in the XRP community have even asked them, like, listen, can you give us a little bit of an insight on who you're working with? Because it does say here, you know, the Federal Reserve Banks are developing a new interbank 24-7, 365 real-time gross clearing and settlement service to support faster payments in the U.S. Learn more about the planned FedNow service and the Federal Re uh, Register uh, notice. And when we look at this, right, pay attention what this is. 24-7, 365, real-time gross settlement how are you settling it in real time without having that backed liquidity something needs to be providing liquidity for real time settlement and remember what we have talked about with this liquidity is the key and which asset in this space has the best liquidity protocol to it or mechanism sorry not protocol ripple with xrp that is the biggest use case value for xrp We've been talking about this for a very long time because it is such, such a, a large area to focus on with XRP. It's much bigger than what we really kind of look at uh, for other assets as well. Like, you know, DLT is great. Things like that is awesome uh, for like, you know, issuance of CBDCs and stuff. But liquidity is the thing that makes everything move. Value is derived and moved on liquidity. We've been paying attention to the FedNow service, specifically with Volante, because Volante is the big player here. And we actually do see here, like this did give us the 2023 FedNow instant payment service launch. You are not getting instant payments without proper, you know, liquidity. And uh, I think that this is probably one of the biggest things to pay attention to, because even down here, you do see like the solutions as well. 
First off, <laughs> there's a few things actually that we are paying attention to down here. So first off, we do see all FedNow messages types, including requests for pay, send and receive, clear and settle, 24-7, 365, built-in sanctions, fraud, and liquidity management. Liquidity management is the big thing there as well. I'm not saying that, you know, the we just recently seen Ripple announce their liquidity hub. That is perfect for liquidity management. We are not sure if, you know, like we're not writing anything off here. I'm not going to, you know, speculate too much. I'm just saying a lot of the things that we actually do see here, you know, really kind of plays into what Ripple is focused on. Um, and we even do see like extensible to ACH, wire, RTP, SWIFT, and other payment types. You know, works with core system, no upgrade needed, compatible with all channels, 300 plus APIs, ISO 222 fluent, you know, resilient active, you know, active cloud deployment, zero downtime. Again, Ripple has like RippleNet uh, or even, you know, the XRP ledger has never had zero downtime. And there's a lot more down here and also proven performance, 46 million plus transactions an hour in the cloud. That is huge. And uh, we also do see over here, like proven instant payments partner, you know, first ever US RTP process by Volante, largest volume processor of US RTP in the market. First end to end instant payment in Saudi Arabia, winner best real time payment solution 2021 uh, Paytech awards. And they have a lot of connections here, by the way, to some major players, but Volante has been working with, you know, Ripple for a very long time. We've talked about this in the past. And uh, we even do see over here, like Volante Technologies launches the first unified service for FedNow and TCH RTP. And uh, this was back in March of this year. Pretty sure that we broke this down a little bit in, um, in an XRP video, actually discussing the connection to XRP. You know, the payment mechanism that they are utilizing looks very similar to RippleNets uh, with XRP. But here is the video of uh, Volante Technologies FedNow uh, solution. This was from March of this year. Watch closely. Real-time payments are here to stay. But is your financial institution ready for this revolution? With Volante Technologies as your trusted payments modernization partner, you can easily meet this challenge to change. And now, Volante offers the easiest and quickest way to FedNow. You can have your 24-7 year-round service up and running without core changes, letting you focus on building better customer-centric services faster than your competition. Volante's FedNow solution is available both on-premise and as a service in the cloud. It's ISO 20022 native with built-in real-time capabilities and active-active deployment, a modern solution built for an ever-changing payments world. And Volante makes it easy for you to get to market quickly with over 300 APIs and services available right here, right now. Best of all, Volante's solution for the FedNow service is extensible to ACH, Fedwire, Swift Cross-Border, and TCH RTP, all built to grow with your business. Volante's secure and reliable payment services keep yours and your customers' data private. They are ISO 27001, SOC 1, and SOC 2 certified. And did you know, Volante processed the first U.S. real-time payment, and today they handle millions of transactions per year. That's impressive. Start your FedNow journey with Volante today and gain the freedom to evolve fast. And this, this entire diagram here where you do see the entire globe connected to one, this is what we have been watching for closely. But remember, right, with Volante, they are such a huge player around the real-time settlement uh, sort of revolution that's happening around payments. And the Federal Reserve has been working with them for a while. And again, they do have so many solutions on here. Uh, the biggest product that we have been looking at is Volpay because Volpay is powered by, I shouldn't say powered by Ripple, but they do have a direct connection to Ripple. Even if we actually look up here and we go to Ripple, for an example, um, let me actually search this. So there is a few things that are totally connected to Ripple here. They actually break Ripple down multiple times on their website for around like cross-border payments and stuff. Uh, but this is the biggest one that we have been looking at is the Volpay Ripple Processor Module because this is actually the entire cross-border payment um, diagram that we do see on even Ripple's website. And we've talked about this in the past as well. I think that Volante is a huge connection for Ripple. Ripple has been working with them for a while. In fact, this goes all the way back to like October of 2015 or 2015, sorry. And I don't know if they actually have the diagram down here. I think that we would actually have to download this, but... 
We do see like Volante Technologies is the leading global provider of cloud payments and financial messaging solutions to accelerate digital transformation. They are served or they are a trusted partner to over 125 banks, financial institutions, etc. And uh, they are processing millions of transactions and trillions in value every single day. Like this is the big player to Ripple. Um, we've talked about this major connection with Volante in the past on multiple occasions. We don't have a full on confirmation of, you know, for example, like the Fed, Fed, Federal Reserve, sorry, um, utilizing Ripple. But I would say with Volante, if they are trying to get real time gross settlement, they're not going to be able to achieve this without something like Ripple. Um, and we've discussed this on multiple occasions. Again, I'm not going to write anything off because we don't know specifically what is going to be happening behind the scenes. But I will say this, the connections to Ripple with the Federal Reserve are so strong that I would say that, you know, if there was a pretty high chance that Ripple would be, you know, utilized here, it would probably be about 60-40. Um, again, you know, we don't know exactly what's happened behind the scenes. All we know is that Ripple has been focused on real-time payments for a very long time. Even going back to 2020, why real-time payments are more important than ever. This fully breaks down everything around, you know, the major push towards real-time payments, real-time settlement as well. Like settlement is the big thing here. And instant, instant is the key to look at around anything payment-wise. With on-demand liquidity, utilizing XRP, we could actually see this. We do see down here, like these financial institutions that utilize RippleNet also have access to its on-demand liquidity service. ODL eliminates the complex IOU infrastructure by allowing financial institutions to leverage the XRP ledger and digital assets as the means of instant settlement to avoid pre-funding. This frees up their capital and guarantees competitive FX rates. If they are trying to compete, right? Which they are. The Federal Reserve, you know, their, their Fed now service is competing with the big banks. They are in competition here. And if they want to achieve the greatest FX rates, they want to you know, achieve the fastest payment system, who do you think that they are going to choose? Again, I don't like to give you guys a 100% guarantee because nothing in this market is guaranteed. Again, I don't know what's going on. I'm not working with the Federal Reserve or anything like that. Um, but what I would say is that there's a very high possibility that they would be utilizing the RippleNet um, service with XRP, specifically leveraging the XRP ledger, leveraging you know XRP for the liquidity gateway, because it would just make sense. The efficiencies are too great to ignore. And again, all of the major connections to XRP through the Federal Reserve, through some of the major players out there, is very substantial. You know, there has been a major major pushed sort of thing going on in the background of things. The plans have been very strong in the past. I don't write anything off with Ripple. This is why I say like, you know, when people say like astronomical price targets for XRP, I don't say that it's not possible. I'm just saying like, I'm not guaranteeing any sort of, you know, prices to be achieved at any sort of, you know, percent um, in the future. Meaning what I mean by that is there's not a 100% guarantee that XRP will hit X amount of dollars by this time or that time, but I don't write it off. I say that there's always a chance, there's always a possibility. I'm just not waiting until those prices are, you know, fully targeted to sell my entire stack. I'm going to be selling at my specific targets, which are 10, 100, you know, et cetera, dollars. But we have been watching the connections. The Federal Reserve is more than ready to usher into an instant payment system. And uh, it's only a matter of time before every single central bank, every single major financial institution is utilizing something like this. And I do believe that Ripple with XRP is going to play a pivotal role within the system. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on if you guys more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, up to you all. Have a beautiful day, beautiful night. Wherever you guys are in this beautiful world, this has been Nick. Peace out, guys.